RF man here. Today I want to demonstrate a new LD Moss RF amplifier that I've been working on. I would like to demonstrate the advantages of an LD Moss amplifier and talk about the topology and then demonstrate how the amplifier actually works. So real quick, the design topology is push-pull. It uses two BLF-188 LD MOS transistors. These are the XR versions, so they're extremely rugged. And we'll talk about that a little later. And you can see the input transformer. You can see the output transformer. You can see the RF choke. Now, before I go any further with the design topology, I know a lot of you are familiar with bipolar transistors, particularly the Toshiba 2SC 2879s. And you might be asking yourself, well, what's the advantage of this LD MOS technology over bipolar technology? Well, I compiled this brief list of advantages. I'll hold that on the screen for a minute. And I'm going to talk to each one of these in detail. The first item was lower cost. So two LD MOS transistors can produce approximately 1500 to 1600 watts. So that would be equivalent to a 16 pill bipolar RF amplifier. And if you look at the cost of uh, Toshiba 2SC79, 16 of those transistors would cost you roughly $800. And the two LD MOS transistors would cost about $400. So right there you have about a $400 savings in cost. Also the design complexity. If you compare a bipolar design, you'd need 16 transistors. So each pair of transistors would need an input transformer, an output transformer. You would need eight splitters, eight combiners, eight RF chokes, etc. So you can see the design complexity would be much greater which also adds cost. Another clear advantage is the simplicity of the biasing circuit. This particular amplifier is class AB, so it's AB biased, and what we're using for the biasing circuit is nothing more than a voltage divider. So it's a very simple circuit to design and build, and the, typically the idle currents for this type of design are about 100 milliamps, which means the gate to source voltage would be 1.4, 1.5 volts. You could bias it as high as 1.7 to 1.8 volts, increase the idle current somewhat, but you won't get that much more power output. So that's another clear advantage over bipolar. Of course, bipolar AB biasing is more complex, requires some discrete components as well as uh, transistor biasing, which is typically how it's done. Another real advantage to this topology is the efficiency. If you look at a bipolar transistor, you look at the specification or data sheet for a 2SC 2879, you're going to find that the efficiencies are somewhere between 45 and 50 percent. Well, for these BLF-188 devices, the efficiency is as high as 80% in the high frequency range. So it's considerably higher. So what does that mean? It means you need a smaller heat sink. You need a smaller power supply. All of that saves costs and reduces the heat generation. So for 1,500 watts, let's just do some quick arithmetic. If I'm at 75% efficiency, I need a 2,000 watt power supply. Now, a bipolar, I'm at 50% efficiency, so 1,500 watts means that I need a 3,000 watt power supply. So, considerably larger wattage rating on the power supply. Okay, so you can see the clear advantages there with less heat dissipation, smaller heat sink, smaller power supply, etc. Okay, another advantage here. Um, would be the SWR rating. With these extremely rugged devices, the SWRs are rated 65 to 1 at all phase angles, so all around the Smith chart. 
Okay, so you can you can literally cut the transmission cable and throw an arc to ground and the devices won't fail. Now try that with the bipolar MOSFET uh, or transistor. Uh, you'll find that the failures will occur within milliseconds and their SWR ratings are, are rated extremely lower than that. For example, it might be 20 to 1. For a bipolar and a standard MOSFET transistor might be about the same. So with these devices being extremely rugged, um, basically the way the devices are designed and their geometries, they can literally take a huge mismatch and still survive without, without failing. So that's another clear advantage. Now before I demonstrate the actual amplifier, I'd like to just talk a little bit about the design topology. As I said earlier, it's a push-pull design. So there's your input transformer, there's your output transformer. Um, it's built on a professionally made PC board and the devices are all soldered directly to the solder pads as you can see there. They're all plated solder pads and there's a solder mask on the board as well. And this push-pull topology, you have your input transformer and your output transformer, one large RF choke okay so impedance matching is accomplished by the use of the two transformers so let's just give a quick example for the output circuit okay the output impedance of these transistors at 27 28 megahertz is 3 ohms and you're matching of course to your 50 ohm impedance of your antenna so if you take 3 and divide by 50 you get around 15 so you're looking at a transformer with a turns ratio of 4 to 1 and of course the impedance ratio equals the turns ratio squared so 4 squared is 16 to 1 so this provides a 16 to 1 match which does very well to match the 3 ohm output impedance of the transistors to your 50 ohm impedance of your antenna and you can see we use a small tuning capacitor which is right here okay to provide a closer match okay same thing occurs on the input side uh, the input transformer is matching the 50 ohms of the transceiver I'm using a striker here okay to the input impedance of the LDMOS transistors okay circuit also uses feedback so we're using closed loop gain, we're using these feedback resistors and capacitor to provide basically a flat gain over the entire 11 meter band. So if you're on channel 1 or on channel 40, your gain is basically going to be flat over that frequency range. So that's just a brief overview of the design topology. And now I'd like to go ahead and demonstrate uh, the use of this. So we're going to turn on my striker here. Turn down the volume so you can hear me. This is a, uh, a striker, as, as you can see there, a 955HP. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and turn up my bias voltage. Okay, so we're running it at about 13 volts. I'll explain that in a few minutes. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and switch on the 50 volt power supply. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the power supply. See, I'm measuring the DC power supply with my fluke meter, and I'm at 51 volts. When I key up the mic, the voltage drops to about 50 volts. So the power supplies regulate very well. Um, these are also very high quality switching power supplies so they're very well filtered so you don't get any noise in your RF signal. Um, Meanwell makes a good line of switching power supplies that are well suited for RF applications um, so those, those are available online. So we got our 51 volts okay and we're gonna go ahead and key up the striker. We'll zoom in on the 
output. So you can see that the output power of the striker dead key is about four watts. Okay, and if we go ahead and take a look here, we're using a 2500 watt slug. So you can see we're slightly over 1500 watts on the bird 43 power meter. So that's RMS watts. Okay, we're going to key up again and show you the current. You can see the current is below 40 amps. That's what I recommend that you don't drive this over 40 amps. Um, I could increase the power and drive this at 16, 17, even 1800 watts, but I'm going over that 40 amp threshold. I do not recommend that for long term reliability. So that's the demonstration for tonight on the new LD Moss RF amplifier. So this is again the RF man. We're signing off.